Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. And today I am back talking about some Warner Archive Blu-rays. And these are all of the classic film variety for those that have said they enjoy my coverage of classic films. Uh, stick with me here. Um, one of my favorites of this very uh, young new year is this Blu-ray of A Day at the Races. This is a Marx Brothers movie. I'm a big fan of the Marx Brothers. I've talked about them on the channel before. And this is from 1937, directed by Sam Wood. Sam Wood had done uh, A Night at the Opera with them in 1935. This is after they moved from Paramount over to MGM. And uh, Irving Thalberg, of course, being the boy genius there, took over and uh, kind of rebranded them in a way, or at least restructured their films. Uh, as I understand it, they were looking for something uh, more in the way of a female audience. And, you know, I'm not exactly sure which things are meant to do the most to appeal to that audience, but what we do have now is more musical numbers, longer and more extravagant musical numbers. Uh, you, you, we saw this in Night at the Opera, and we see this again here. This is actually one of their longer films. It's just about like nine minutes shy of two hours. And what's interesting about that is that it is a lot of that running time that is taken up by, um, well, okay, it's not fair to say the musical numbers, but musical numbers, there's multiples. They take up big chunks, like five, ten minutes at a time when they happen. Um, and the Marx Brothers routines are longer here too in some ways. And that's cool because actually... Uh, I actually love a couple of the numbers in this. Anyway, the back, let's see here. Um, the Marxes skewer medicine and bring home a racetrack winner in the hilarious A Day at the Races. In his favorite role, Groucho Marx, is Dr. Hugo Z. Hackenbush. Did not know it was his favorite role. Uh, MD, PhD, RFD, MC, PDQ, BYOB, and none of the above. Dispensing horse pills and quips with equal glee. Chico Mar uh, Harpo and favorite foil Margaret Dumont join in the fun of this thoroughly uh, thoroughbred musical comedy. Enjoy the Tootsie Footsie Fritzy ice cream, Dumont's medical exam, Harpo's uh, pretty girl pantomime sketch, uh, wallpaper whackness, and wall-to-wall -wall hilarity in the Marx way. Now what that doesn't mention is that this film also features the great and lovely Maureen O'Sullivan, who in this case is the um, impetus for part of the story because she runs this, um, it's not an insane asylum, but it's a sanitarium, sorry. There's a great bit at the opening where Chico is trying to head off tourists who are trying to go to a racetrack uh, with a bus for the sanitarium. <laughs> Like, come to the sanitarium as if that's a fun thing to do. Anyway, the sanitarium is about to be closed down and the Marxes um, end up helping out. Uh, Chico is already there helping. Harpo is a... He's a jockey, I guess, named uh, Stuffy, I want to say. Um, and uh, Margaret Dumont is one of the patients there who's just about to leave the sanitarium because... She wants to go find Dr. Hackenbush, and that's Groucho, who she at some point dealt with, and he treated her. He is a vet. He, he treats horses, but somehow she thinks he's a real doctor, and so when Chico's character gets the idea to bring him over to the sanitarium to keep Margaret Dumont on board, she happens to be a very wealthy lady, and maybe she can help them get out of the financial troubles that they're in. Uh, and then, of course, there's a romance subplot with Margaret, Osul uh, Margaret O'Sullivan and Maureen O'Sullivan and um, plenty of Groucho romancing Margaret Dumont, which is always fun. Uh, but it has a couple of my favorite bits of all time that they ever did. The uh, Tootsie Fritzy ice cream, which is basically, I mean, there's this whole other subplot with a horse and, and trying to raise money for the sanitarium by having, I think, Maureen O'Sullivan's boyfriend, like, buys a horse and... 
And so there's this whole horse thing and racetrack thing that's happening. And there's a great climax to the race, racetrack, which is really, really wonderful. This is another thing I think Thalberg, uh, I mean, I, I can't say for sure, but incorporated into their films, which is the crazy, you know, totally nutso elevated finales, crazy chases and just nut, nutty stuff, um, climactic stuff. And it's a super fun closing set piece for sure. But the Tootsie Fritzy ice cream is basically this idea that uh, Groucho is, you know, Hackenbush. He's gone to the racetrack to bet on a horse and Chico is pushing an ice cream cart and he stops him and he's like, hey, I got a tip for you. And basically goes through this elaborate scheme to sell him books that will tell him which horse to bet on when in fact Groucho had the proper horse to begin with. Uh, but it's pretty great because it just goes on and on. Like he gives him a code and then he's like, okay, well, you know, check your code book. Oh, I don't have a code book. Oh, well, I happen to have one here. Let me say that. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, wait, it says I need a breeder's guide. And he's like, oh, well, I happen to have, and it just keeps going like that. And it's really funny and I really love it. And there's a great medical examination scene and that's pretty hilarious too. Another scene where uh, Chico and Harpo are trying to get this woman out of Groucho's room because she's going to frame him and get Margaret Dumont mad so that she won't give the money. And that scene's hilarious. So these scenes are great. And the reason, again, the movie's so long is because these set pieces go on for five, ten minutes. So between the musical sequences and those set pieces, you probably have like 40 minutes of the movie or something, maybe 50. Um, and it's just a lot of fun and silly and, you know, it's it's got some dated things about it, some of its time things certainly uh, but the musical numbers are definitely interesting and the Marxes are very funny so uh, this is a really nice blu-ray in that it looks fantastic black and white but it looks really good um, and it has a commentary track which is really neat and that is by uh, Marx Brothers encyclopedia author Glenn Mitchell and he does a really nice job some of the stuff I got about the movie I got from that commentary Really nice job with that track. And then we have a Making of Featurette, On Your Marks, Get Set, Go, uh, which is a sort of a short documentary, maybe like 27 minutes or so, featuring uh, interviews with Dom DeLuise, Carl Reiner, and some other folks, um, some folks that acted in their movies. I want to say Maureen O'Sullivan is in the interview, like an older Maureen O'Sullivan is being interviewed. But they're basically talking about the Marxes and their irreverent comedy and what a big deal it was and, you know, some sort of telling the story of their movie stuff, you know, overall. But that's a nice feature. At these Warner Archive Blu-rays don't often feature that stuff. Um, and then we have uh, classic MGM shorts, Robert Benchley's A Night at the Movies, classic MGM cartoons, Gallop and Gals, Mama's New Hat, and Old Smokey. And audio only treasures, Groucho Marx radio performance of Dr. Hackenbush, written for the film but unused, a message from the man in the moon outtake, and Leo is on the air uh, trailer. Um, so, a lot of features for this Warner Archive Blu ray. If you're a Marx Brothers fan, this is an absolute must. You got to grab this. So, that's a day at the races. Then we have a movie called Faithless. And uh, this one is from 1932, so a little pre-code. And features Tallulah Bankhead, Robert Montgomery. Um, it's one I hadn't heard of, honestly, before this Blu-ray. Um, looks very nice on the transfer. The great Tallulah Bankhead stars as a giddy heiress who must lose everything in the Great Depression before she can find love. A beautiful socialite who's loveless, shameless, and faithless. Bankhead stars as Carol Morgan, who spurns the affections of Bill Wade, that's Montgomery, because he earns a mere 20000 a year. But when Morgan loses her fortune in the Depression, rather than accepting the man who genuinely loves her, she becomes the mistress of a still wealthy, abusive man she does not love. Morgan's life spirals downward until she finally sinks to selling her body on the streets. So this is a very pre-code movie. Um, but her first, quote, customer turns out to be an understanding policeman who takes her to Wade, who uh, still loves her, and whom Mar Morgan both now appreciates and loves in return, based on the novel uh, Tinfoil by Mildred Cram. So this one, um, only about 77 minutes, which I like, of 1930s movies, uh, directed by Harry Beaumont, who um, did things like 
our dancing daughters, dance fools, dance, um, a lot of pre-code stuff. Murder in the Private Car, which is one that uh, Warner Archive put out on DVD. I'd love to see a Blu-ray of that. Anyway, um, Blu-ray features vintage classic short subjects, rambling round radio uh, number 1B, and the transatlantic mystery, the symphonic um, murder mystery as well. So not a ton of features on this one, unfortunately, but it does look very nice and is great for pre-code fans. Um, very enjoyable pre-code movie with Tallulah and Montgomery there. So that is uh, Faithless. Next up we have Errol Flynn in uh, The Prince and the Pauper. This one is directed by William Kiley, who had done things like, well, he was, I guess he was a co-director on Robin Hood with Michael Curtiz, but he also did The Man Who Came to Dinner, which is a movie I just discovered late last year uh, from 1941. Very funny, screwball. I think it was on HBO Max. It might still be there. Um, could get, could use a nice Blu-ray, actually. Um, ladies, when they talk about um, Each Dawn I Die, these are just, Bride Came COD. These are just some of the movies that Kylie's directed. So they're interesting titles. Um, this is Mark Twain's Immortal Classic. Uh, and it's about uh, two boys, the Prince Edward and the pauper Tom, are born on the same day. And then years later, when young teenage Tom sneaks into the palace garden, he meets the prince. They change clothes with one another before the guards discover them and throw out the prince, thinking he's the urchin. No one believes them when they try to tell the truth about which is which soon after the old king dies and the prince will inherit the throne. So you get an idea of where this story goes. Uh, it also features as well, you know, Errol Flynn, but Claude Rains, the great Claude Rains is the Earl of uh, Hertford and Barton McLean and uh, Alan Hale, you know, who was in a ton of, um, of uh, Errol Flynn movies. And uh, yeah, so this one, just another sort of, Adventure. Um, Errol Flynn duels into action in Warner Brothers' spectacular spirited film of Mark Twain's classic novel amid 16th century England's pomp and poverty. Two look alike lads, one a beggar, one King Edward VI. Exchange identities for a lark, but their switch backfires, and it's up to the soldier fortune, Miles Hendon, that's Flynn, to turn the tables on a conspirator, that's Reigns, and return the correct lad to the thr throne. Um, Flynn's raking persona. William Kiley's spirited direction, Eric Wolfgang Korngold's thrilling score. Korngold did some really great scores for like the Seahawk. Um, maybe he did Captain Blood too, but they're just this rousing, you know, adventure scores, beautiful brass, just big, um, you know, great, great music. Uh, thrilling score and the spry performances of the twins, Billy and Bobby Mouch, uh, helped many a film fan form an enchanted view of old England that view is just as rousing and irresistible today. The Prince and the Pauper wears the crown as regal all-family entertainment. And this one, not a lot of features here, but classic WB cartoons, Plenty of Money and You, Streamlined Greta Green, Subbonnet Blue, and the original trailer. Um, yes, this one is, of course, from 1937, uh, same year as the uh, Day at the Races, but a beautiful you know scan of the film looks lovely these Warner Archive Blu-rays are never lacking in terms of quality they really do a great job and I've said this many 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 times but these continue to be very satisfying in terms of the transfers that we get from Warner Archive uh, so if that's something you value these discs will be right up your alley despite maybe not having a ton of features you know except for that Day of the Races disc which is awesome and actually one of my favorite discs of 24 so far but anyway, so that is um, The Prince and the Pauper from 1937. And then last, uh, from the Warner Archive group, we have Cabin in the Sky. This is from director Vincent Minnelli, who, I mean, just did so much stuff. Uh, American in Paris, Meet Me in St. Louis, Gigi, The Bad and the Beautiful, Bandwagon, Some Came Running, one of my favorites, um, The Pirate, Lust for Life, Brigadoon, the Clock, that's another one that got a Blu-ray recently, thank goodness. Uh, two Weeks in Another Town. Just a really great uh, director. And this one, um, well, it is uh, based on the smash Broadway musical Cabin in the Sky. tells the vibrant fable of 
rascally little Joe torn between the love of his devoted wife, Petunia, and the wiles of a good time bad girl, Georgia Brown. Little Joe is also caught in a tug of war between uh, emissaries of the Lord and Satan. How can virtue triumph over evil? Well, Petunia, as Petunia says, sometimes when you fight the devil, you got to jab him with your own pit, which is with his own pitchfork. Legendary producer Arthur Freed gathered an astounding group of gifted artists to bring this stage hit to the screen, making his directorial debut. Vincent Minnelli and stars Ethel Waters, Eddie Rochester Anderson, Lena Horne, Louis Armstrong, and Duke Ellington are more than a match for the devil in this MGM musical treasure with a soundtrack of dazzling standards, including Taking a Chance on Love, Happiness is Just a Thing Called Joe, Cabin in the Sky is a joyous classic. So I did not realize this was um, his debut film coming out in 1943. Uh, I guess I'd always thought that he would, um, had done a ton of stuff before that, but, uh, I guess a lot of his stuff came in the, you know, Meet Me, Meet Me in St. Louis is 44, American in Paris is 51, Bad and the Beautiful is 52, I mean, these are, uh, The Clock is 45, so he's doing a lot of stuff, um, after this, but the, but he's a great director, and so it's always interesting to see, debut films from directors that would uh, obviously show a great talent for especially musicals. So for those interested in what he does right out of the gate, this is certainly an impressive film on that level and definitely lets you know this is the guy that's going to go on to make those musicals. Um, a really nice um, cast, and uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting film for sure. Um, this one's got some features, though. This is nice. Feature audio commentary by Evangela Anderson and Eva Anderson, uh, Eddie, Eddie Rochester Anderson's wife and daughter, uh, Fayard Nicholas, black cultural scholar Todd Boyd, film historian Drew Casper with interview excerpts of Lena Horne. So you got a really nice commentary track, robust in terms of all that they're bringing into it. Um, and then Vintage Pete Smith Specialty Short Studio Visit, Audio Only Bonus, Louis Armstrong, Ain't It the Truth, Outtake, and the original theatrical trailer. So again, another beautiful transfer of a, uh, I think, lesser seen, lesser talked about musical, uh, but they've done a really, really nice job with the restoration, with the look of the, the Blu-ray, and the extra features, that commentary, really solid stuff. So a very nice release of Cabin in the Sky, Vincent Minnelli's debut film from 1943. Okay, last but not least, this is not a Warner Archive movie. This is um, coming from another, uh, what is this called? Memory Lane. Um, but this one's interesting because it's called Blood and Black, La or sorry, Blood and Lace, not Blood and Black Lace, not to be confused with the Mario Bava film which is one of my favorites. This is from 1971, directed by Philip S. Gilbert, who I think only directed this movie. Um, and it's a really odd and dark film. This had come out previously from Screen Factory, but has since gone out of print. Uh, I can't remember if there were a ton of features on that one. Um, just pull it down and have a look. This is the Screen Factory Blu-ray. This did have a commentary by Richard Harlan Smith and an alternate opening title, so you would be missing that, which is significant because Richard Harlan Smith is one of my, or among my favorite uh, commentary gentlemen uh, out there, and he did a nice job with it. This is Bare Bones, um, but it is an interesting movie. Uh, available, let's see, this is from the Screen Factory disc, available for the first time on home, on a home entertainment format. I didn't realize that the Screen Factory disc had been the debut on home video of this film. So a rare film from that point of view. Blood and Lace is a twisted tale of horror frequently cited as a precursor to the slasher films of the late 70s and early 80s. After her mother's brutal murder at the hands of a hammer-wielding maniac, teenage Ellie Masters, that's Melody Patterson, is suddenly orphaned. She is sent to a home for children run by the enigmatic uh, Mrs. Deer. This is Gloria Graham uh, of Classic films, noirs, The Big Heat, In a Lonely Place, many others. Um, uh, she's in The Bad and the Beautiful, which I mentioned uh, just a second ago. Uh, in spite of the 
concern that Ellie will be the newest target of her mother's killer. Uh, but as the terror strikes again and again, it becomes unclear who might be the bigger threat to Ellie's life, the mysterious murderer with a hammer or her sadistic new caretaker with borderline insane plot twists and some of the some unexpected performances by two faces familiar to fans of classic sitcoms, Vic Tabak uh, from Alice, he was Mel, and Len Lesser, Uncle Leo from Seinfeld. Uh, this little-known horror gem is jolting, terror-filled thriller you've got to see to believe. That is a good summary of this film. Uh, it is pretty crazy, dark, weird, you know, twisted, and has some twists and turns to it. I'm not going to spoil any of that, but I did spot this coming out and just wanted to make it known that this new Blu-ray is available. Um, assuming the same scan from the um, from the old disc, I don't think they've done anything new with it, but that said, it is now available again for you to pick up should you want to, and it is pretty unique. There's not a lot of 70s horror films quite like it. Um, there's a creepy mask uh, involved that I do think is pretty, uh, interesting. I do, I'm just a sucker for good mass in horror movies, and, and this one definitely has that, and it just has a creepy, eerie vibe, that, you know, sense of dread that sort of carries through, uh, even f right from that opening hammer murder that you see. So, uh, anyway, that's the last of this group, Blood and Lace, available now, again, for you to pick up if you want it. So, anyway, thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.